Holly's end is uh, 7 mil narrow gauge, 16.5. Um, the layout itself was constructed uh, back in 1999. Narrow gauge always appealed to me, the fact that it's got so much that you can do and get away with that they used to do in real practice. This layout is not prototypical uh, at all. It's, it's actually just what's come into my head and I researched it in the fact of looking in books, seeing what buildings for the air area were okay, you know. The station, uh, all the buildings in that area, as well as the rest of the layout, are all scratch built through either using plastic card, cardboard, or uh, various um, small thin plastics and PVCs. The platforms are uh, made of MDF material, uh, laid on a frame to get them level, and then coloured with a wood stain to actually get the effect of what they really would be looking like in real life. Um, coming away from that, the signal box is um, cardboard slated uh, tiles on the top with uh, grain of wheat bulbs inside just to illuminate a, a very minor detail inside. Nothing uh, dramatic, but enough to know that there's a figure in there and there's the levers for the point work. The canal was an additional uh, feature that we added on. Uh, after a, about a year on the circuit, we found that uh, people were, you know, saying to us, you know, it's missing something. And uh, also the fact that the fencing along the front was getting uh, a bit sort of butchered by uh, adults as well as children knocking them about because they're just matchsticks drilled and put in and stained. So we thought a good idea would be to, after seeing a few pictures where there was a canal merging alongside a railway, uh, we thought we'd build a canal and we did it and it transformed the layout in the fact it gave it more depth of field and also uh, it gave another dimension to the layout. Uh, not only that, it did stop people smashing the front fences off trying eagerly to look over the trees to see what was going on behind the buildings. On the uh, loco and rolling stock uh, side we've um, found that uh, some of the kits are very good but they're very very pricey but we found that we can go around various uh, second hand stalls and uh, get some very very nice H uh, HO gauge or OO gauge um, chassis with quite intricate valve gear uh, but they just need a bit of alteration i.e. bigger cab, 7mm size, bigger chimneys and, and a little bit of buffer work alterations just to make them look 7mm size and you can get a good enough loco, we've got about three or four on here that are Fleischmann chassis and uh, they, they only cost us about £35. I think by the time you've paid out for a chimney and uh, the bits of plastic card and bits of brass work to bring them up to the 7 mil size, you're only looking at a, a locomotive that will last you for, well we've had someone here that have lasted three or four years, they're running perfectly now. We've humoured some of the dioramas on the actual layout to, uh, on the platform area, there's a, a chap with a suitcase, a porter, where it's exploded out and a vicar's looking at him and sort of, you can imagine what the vicar's saying, I didn't know those things were in my case, really I didn't, you know. Um, we've got uh, a lady uh, kissing a, a gentleman in a very secluded spot down by the platform. A figure underneath the uh, van up by the woodyard uh, where a policeman is in attendance to make sure that there's not going to be too much trouble getting it sorted out. His legs are underneath and people do pick up on these little uh, bits of detail and they find that uh, they haven't really watched the trains go past that we've got out because they are too busy looking and finding things that they didn't see when they was in front of the layout before. I always wanted to build a railway, lay it myself. And uh, with family and kids, you, you pull it off. And then one day I said to my wife, one day I'm going to build a model railway. So she said to me, oh, if you sell that car in the garage, you can build a model railway. So I thought, if we're going to do it, I might as well do it right, I joined a local club. So I found our local club, joined it, and that's how I met Brian, who owns Ollie's End. And, uh, he had just finished the layout and he wanted 
he wanted to take it to a show, and I had a van, so the two come together, and I took him to his first show, and I've been there with him ever since. We did a few, first few shows with Brian's Lair, and uh, it ran okay. And then it started to muck about a bit, and I had a look underneath, and no criticism of Brian, but he isn't the best at wiring, it's his damn for, I suppose. I tried to cure it, and we did a couple more shows, and if, if a layout doesn't run right when you're at a show, you might as well not even take it out, because it's not enjoyable. So we got it round to my garage, I laid it on his side, I said, turn around, Brian, and I cut off every bit of wiring. He said, you sure? We've got three weeks before the next show. I said, oh, we'll rewire that rather than take it out again. So we, we rewired it the way that I was taught by this, this club, where every bit of track's got a wire running to it. Don't rely on any fish plates. Connected them all up, used fairly large gal wire, and just rewired it. Two electronic track cleaners, two very nice can controllers, and the things run perfectly ever since, so long as you keep it clean. We've, we've tried to add realism to the layout, so when people are at a show and they're looking at the layout and we're not running a train, there's something for them to look at. So one of the first things we did, we fitted a, a welder kit to the uh, layout, then we fitted a, a bonfire, we did a bonfire with a couple of grain of wheat, uh, a bit of tin foil behind it, some little bits of timber in front of it, and put a smoke meter behind it, so that gives realism of smoke. I decided to, um, we put a couple of cars on there, and I thought if I could light up the lights, so the headlights are working, give realism. So what, I've got a standard Corgi model, drilled out the two rivets, drilled out the two headlights, and fitted two grain of wheat. Also fitted a flashing LED to the top of that. I wired them all in series inside and I fitted a jack plug, but jack plugs are tapered, so I drilled a hole and he made it larger and larger till it is a tight fit, super glued it in, put the female on the track, and then took that to a nine-volt transformer. And as you can see, it's pretty good. <laughs>